Hey, what do you done to Voltaire and Shakespeare in common? Well, two things. They are all considered to be among the best authors in human history, and they all wrote about the Assyrian queen, Shamuramat, or known by the Greeks as Semiramis. But how come Semiramis was remembered throughout history? From the ancient Greeks all the way to the Renaissance, and even today, by Assyrian families, are still named their daughters after this iconic queen. By the way, the name would then be Shamoramat and not Semiramis. What did she do to leave such a legacy, lasting for three thousand years? Well, the story is one of power, controversy, and a daring move that changed the course of history. For the first time in a thousand years, Assyria stood without a king. Shamshiadad V had died of natural causes, and of course, according to Assyrian law. His oldest son was to inherit the throne, but Adarnirari was barely in his teens. He couldn't lead the army or rule the vast empire alone, and Assyrian governors and officials plotted to take the throne for themselves. So, the boy king's life was in immediate danger. The crown seemed doomed to be claimed by others, but. A powerful force stood in their way. A lioness, his mother, Semiramis, with over a decade of experience as queen, she knew the dangers her son would face, and to protect him, she did the unthinkable. She claimed the throne of Assyria herself, defying tradition and law. In a male-dominated society, where women had never ruled, Semiramis revoked the rules as the first woman to govern the Assyrian Empire. She wielded power, not as a mere queen regent, but as a ruler in her own right. Her title, Ummisari, meaning "mother of the king," reflected her ultimate purpose to safeguard her son's reign. Semiramis's leadership was not just symbolic; she led the Assyrian army in battle, defending the empire against external threats, and maintaining order within. Many underestimated her. But Semiramis's bold decisions and battlefield prowess awed both her people and their enemies. Few knew that she had gained military experience from her husband's campaigns, including the civil war he fought against his brother. Her strategic mind and resilience in the face of opposition ensured her place in history. But her story doesn't end here. Semiramis's legacy. Transcends historical records, and even enters the realm of legends. Over time, stories about your crew, and he was elevated to a near mythical status. It is here that her name begins to intertwine with the goddess Ishtar, a central figure in the Mesopotamian pantheon. Ishtar, goddess of love, fertility, and war, embodied both creation and destruction, much like the Mesopotamian reign. Which balanced nurturing her son's future with the fierce protection of her empire. Ishtar was also known for defying gender expectations, leading armies and dominating both love and war, much like Semiramis's bold deviance of Assyrian laws that barred women from ruling. Though there is no direct historical evidence that Semiramis was worshipped as a goddess, a later depiction is. Semiramis in Greek, Roman, and later Renaissance works through on divine imagery, the legendary figure of Semiramis, sometimes portrayed as part human, part divine, can be seen as the embodiment of Ishtar archetype, a powerful, fearless female figure who leads in both love and war. In her lifetime. Semiramis accomplished what no woman before had, ruling the world's most powerful empire. After securing her son's throne, she continued to support him, even fighting alongside him in battle. Adarnirari successfully ruled for over twenty years, and his legacy was inseparable from that of his mother, whose strength and wisdom guided him through the turbulent years of his youth. Semiramis's influence extended far beyond her life, 
A story was a immortalized by Greek historians like Herodotus and later by Dante, Voltaire and Shakespeare. It was remembered not only as a queen, but as a symbol of famine and power in a world ruled by men. So, what can we learn from her? The mere Mrs. story isn't just about willpower or mother's love, though admittedly that is certainly a part of it. It's about understanding your why, your reason. For Semiramis, her why, her reason was clear. It was her son. And when her why is powerful enough, when it transcends the self, it can lead to unstoppable achievements.